A setback in the battle against the coronavirus. Cases of reinfection are emerging in Hong Kong, the United States and Europe. They suggest immunity from the disease does not necessarily last long. The World Health Organization is calling for more studies. Concrete answers are vital in developing a vaccine, that is, if we ever get one. So much for herd immunity or full immunity. And what about natural immunity? So many questions, which we'll get to in a moment with an expert. First, the world's first genetically verified case of someone being reinfected with COVID-19 and what that could mean for the pandemic. As the coronavirus pandemic took hold, scientists knew a vaccine would be the best protection against the virus. But there was still the hope that those recovering from infections would be immune, as is the case with viruses like smallpox or polio. When a 33-year-old man in Hong Kong tested positive for a second time, those hopes were ruined. Some people might ask, will you be immune to the virus forever after you recover? There wasn't a clear answer before, but now it's certain. After your first infection, there's always a chance you'll get infected again. In their research paper, the team at the University of Hong Kong says the second infection was a different strain of the virus and that the patient was asymptomatic. The study examines how often people who've had COVID-19 are immune to new infections and for how long. These questions have implications for vaccine development and decisions about returning to work, school and social activities. As many countries in Europe and around the world went into lockdown to slow the spread, Sweden went against the tide, opting not to confine its population. Schools and restaurants remained open in the hope that infected people would become immune, thus allowing them to continue their lives as normal and ultimately slowing the spread of the virus. I think uh, Swedish people are uh, uh, taking big responsibilities. So if you're sick, we stay at home, and if you're not, we can be outside. Sweden's infection rate and deaths per million were soon among the worst in Europe. And yet, testing showed the country still fell a long way short of the estimated 90% which would create herd immunity. Nor is the rest of the world anywhere close to that. The WHO says that until the world has readily available vaccines, the virus will continue to inflict significant changes on our lives. Now, as a planet, as a global population, we are nowhere close to the levels of immunity required to stop this disease transmitting. And we need to focus on what we can actually do now to suppress transmission and not live in hope of herd immunity being our salvation. Right now, that is not a solution. Uh, and it's not a solution we should be looking to uh, for, for our salvation. And the immunity picture is looking increasingly complicated. In the southern German town of Bad Feilenbach, a study by Germany's Robert Koch Institute found that 40% of participants who had tested positive for the coronavirus before the study began no longer had immunoglobin G antibodies, the most common type of antibody. We know from other studies that a proportion of people proven to have been infected with SARS-CoV-2 show no antibodies after a certain amount of time. But this doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have immunity to SARS-CoV-2. The Robert Koch Institute is now conducting several regional studies and plans to start a countrywide antibody study at the end of September. As researchers toil to bring vaccines to the world, questions are looming about whether it's feasible to create a vaccine that would actually work for a lifetime. Well, let's go over to Thomas Kamrat. He's director of the Institute for Immunology in Jena. Thomas, what are the chances of getting reinfected? The chance seems to be real but slim. There are several case reports from different countries on people who have recovered from COVID-19 and then felt sick again. There's a series of eight patients from China and single reports from Hong Kong and some European countries. So it seems to be possible. But you're saying rare. Uh, what about um, other cases that haven't been uncovered and, and, and more studies that have to be done according to the World Health Organization? I mean, could this be the tip of the iceberg? 
Probably not, because from we know a little bit about the immunity against COVID-19 by now. People usually develop antibody responses, which are protective. People usually develop responses by T cells, which are protective. But we do know that in some people, these responses may be short-lived. So that would be a possibility to explain the fact that some people can become reinfected after a while. But most people should have uh, protective immunity for some time after their infection with COVID-19, with SARS-CoV-2. But, but what about full immunity? I mean, does that exist when it comes to COVID-19? What do you mean by full immunity? That once infected, you can never get infected again in your exactly. life? Is that what you mean by Exactly. Well, yeah. that's, too, that, that's too early to say because we only know this infection since a little bit more than half a year. So thus far, the vast majority of the symptomatic patients and, and the asymptomatic that have been investigated uh, have not fallen sick again. Uh, but we do not know if the immunity against the virus will last for a year or for two years or for many years. Experience from other coronaviruses, including the SARS coronavirus, shows that the immune responses wane after some time. So for those um, immune responses, antibody responses were no longer detectable after six years in most of the people. So we do not expect lifelong immunity uh, after an episode of COVID-19 probably. And the big question, what about developing vaccines or drugs to treat a COVID infection? Doesn't, doesn't success depend on knowing exactly how immunity against the disease works? Well, um, vaccines have often been developed uh, quite empirically, and, and there's a lot of vaccines, promising vaccines in, in the pipeline. We do know a little on protective immunity. You're absolutely right. We, we need to know much more. But thus far, it seems that the vaccines that have been tested are inducing the right responses. And probably or possibly we will have to be content with uh, less than, than the normal success. So maybe a vaccine would not induce a lifelong immunity or not induce an immunity that lasts for 10 years or so. But even if it lasted for two or three years, I think it would be a great success. And even if it would just prevent the severe clinical courses, if it would switch a clinical, a severe clinical course to a mild infection, I think that would be a huge success already given the current situation. So could it mean getting immunized, uh, getting a, uh, like a flu shot every year, basically? We don't know if it would be every year or every other year or every three years or so, but that could be the case. It would be slightly different from flu because flu, you need a new shot every year because the virus changes so rapidly. That does not seem to be the case with the coronavirus and the, with the SARS-CoV-2. If one would have to immunize more frequently, it would probably be because the immune response, the memory wanes against uh, uh, the virus and therefore it needs to be refreshed. That, that's a possibility that needs to be explored. Thomas Kamrat there from the Institute for Immunology in Jena. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have a nice day. For a look at some other aspects concerning the coronavirus, it's over to our science correspondent, Derek Williams, with your questions. We've heard about the underlying diseases and conditions that can influence the severity of COVID-19 outcomes. But does viral load also affect severity? When I began looking into this, I quickly realized that there's still no a clear answer to this question, partly because the amount of virus in a patient's body uh, changes from day to day as uh, the disease progresses. Um, we know from other diseases that, that high viral loads are, are linked to infectiousness, um, but do they also affect disease severity in COVID-19? Um, well, the information coming out of the studies is kind of conflicting. Um, a recent, a fairly large scale one, for example, uh, found a clear link between mortality and, and high viral load in, in hospitalized patients, and even suggested um, it could be used as a tool for stratifying patient risk. But other studies that have measured uh, viral loads in, for example, children uh, who had very mild forms of the disease found they were generally carrying even more virus than adults who developed severe forms of the disease. And then there are the studies showing that, that asymptomatic or, or pre-symptomatic adults can also have uh, very heavy viral loads. So, so after hours of reading, uh, this is how I would interpret the data. Um, because kids 
and asymptomatic adults can have lots of SARS-CoV-2 in their bodies, uh, but no symptoms. Uh, high viral loads don't seem to be a reliable indicator of disease severity until you land in the hospital with a severe case. Uh, at that point, it does become an indicator of outcome severity. Um, what we still don't know is, is whether high viral load is actually causing the disease to get worse for those patients in the hospital or if it's an effect. But at least in those who are hospitalized, um, the two are associated in some way. Well, over 38,000 people turned out to protest against Germany's coronavirus measures on the weekend. There were multiple arrests after clashes with police. They say right-wing extremists co-opted the demonstration. Over 9,000 people have died from the virus in Germany. Still, protesters believe the danger is overblown. Personally, I don't believe that there's a pandemic. I do think the disease exists, but not a pandemic. Well, according to the new definition of a pandemic, it's a pandemic. But that has to do with how much it's spread, and not with how dangerous it is. Finally, medical staff are among those most at risk of getting the coronavirus. But a hospital in Mexico City has taken on a new employee with complete immunity to COVID-19. La Luchi Robotina goes from room to room providing support to patients. With the robot's help, they can talk to relatives via video call or to the hospital psychologist. Feelings of isolation are a big problem for COVID sufferers, and this is where the robot comes in. <laughs> 